How's it going everybody? You know who it is. My name is Sanwu and today I want to try to help you to fix corrupted audio files which can for example happen if Ableton crashes while you are recording a project or something and in fact that just happened to me yesterday when I tried to record my latest video. So I thought I'd try to share my experience with you and try to help you if you encounter this problem as well. So how it all starts is you are running Ableton, you are recording a session and suddenly Ableton crashes without you having stopped the sequencer and saved any of your work. And then when you try to open up Ableton again, most likely you will encounter this message right here. I'm going to click yes in this case because of course I would try to see the work that I've done previously but oh no I don't have any files in my project meaning my audio files that I just took the time to record aren't there. So what we are going to do first is we are going to go to our finder then to your user in my case that's Sun Wu. Now I click on music, go to Ableton, go to live recordings and then you will have to look for the project that has the right timestamp on it, meaning it was recorded whenever your um, Ableton crashed, your Ableton session crashed. So in my case that was yesterday and then you click on samples, record it and hopefully you will find some kind of audio files in that folder. Now luckily there seem to be some audio files that have been saved when my Ableton session crashed. Um, let's try to play back these audio files. As you can see there is nothing playing, usually my audio would play if I press the space bar but I can see that the file is actually quite large so it's almost a gigabyte large so it does contain some kind of information but I just cannot read it. Now let me try to drag this file into Ableton and you can see at the bottom of the screen that the file could not be read and that it is corrupted in fact. So now we have to try to somehow make it readable to our computer and this is going to be our next step. And in order to do so, we are going to download a program called Audacity. That's it right here. You can easily find it. It's an old audio editor. As you can tell from the design, it's been around for ages. But in this case, it is very useful because it can help us to open even corrupted audio files and make them usable again. So go ahead and download Audacity. And when we have downloaded Audacity, the next step is going to be to click on File click on import and then you will select raw data because the corrupted audio file is not quite recognized as a proper audio file but if we use raw data we can still open this file if we give the program the right information which we are going to be prompted to in a second. So. Um, I'm already in the folder where I can select my corrupted audio files. Again, if you want to maneuver there, I would go to, live, uh, to my user and then music, Ableton, live recordings and here it is. And I will just select this corrupted file right here. I can see it's half a gigabyte almost. I'm going to open it. And now I'm prompted with some questions about the format in which my file has been recorded in. Of course, if you are like me, you might not know what all of this means, but there's a helpful tool that you can use in order to find out what you have to input here. So, first of all, we are going to go to our browser and we are going to open this website right here. I'll link it down in the description. What this website basically does is you can drag a file in here and it will give you information on this file. So, now I will open my finder again. 
And I will open my usual saving spot for my Ableton projects. You can look in your Ableton preferences where you are saving your Ableton projects. In my case, it's here. And now I will find a functioning audio file from any of my Ableton projects, basically. To Yeah, okay, I can hear some voice there. And the reason we are using an older audio file from one of our Ableton projects is that it might be easier for this website to give us information on that file because it isn't corrupted. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this audio file in here. And now we get a set of information on this audio file. So for example, we've got 24 bit, 44.1 kilohertz. It is one channel of audio, meaning it's a mono signal. Of course, you will have to adapt that to the corrupted files, meaning you will have to guess if it's mono or stereo. And format settings big, I think this will be significant as well. All right, now with that information, let's go back to Audacity, where we have loaded the corrupted audio file as raw data. Now we will use this information to help us out over here. All right, so first of all, encoding, meaning the bit depth right here. We've got 24 bit, wonderful. Byte order, I think has to do with the format settings, big right here, so we go to Big Endian. I actually don't have a clue what that means, but that's what works. And now the sample rate, 44.1, it's already entered right here. Now you may encounter problems and you may get just a white noise file. If that happens, try to play with the start offset and set it to one or two instead of zero, but I'm gonna leave it at zero and hit import and wonderful we've got a functioning audio file and now we can actually listen to it but of course we might want to use it in Ableton Live or another door so now we are just gonna go to export the file as WAV or as an AIF file and I'm gonna call it test and save it to the desktop Yes, replace the file, okay. And it has exported. Now I'm gonna go to my desktop and here's the file. Again, I can just press test, test. bar now. One. My name is, it plays it and I'm hearing some audio, wonderful. Now I can go to live and just drag the file in there. And of course, this will take ages because it's got to render the waveform, but if I double click it, I can see already that it is working and that I'm getting a proper audio file loaded into Ableton. Wonderful. Now you just got to repeat this process for your other audio files, meaning for every separate track that you have recorded in your previously crashed Ableton project, and then you can work on the project again. Of course, this is a tiny bit of work, but it's worth it if you don't want to do the whole session again. And it really saved my ass yesterday, and I hope it will help you as well. And that's already it for the video. This is how you save corrupted Ableton files and make them usable again. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this helps you. If it did, I would appreciate a like. Maybe subscribe to the channel and ring the bell. I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, have a wonderful time. Peace.